Howdy there, Isaac here. This series has been pretty popular, although with the recent Raditz craze, I suppose it's only natural. Anyways, we left off last week with a pretty interesting cliffhanger. Without further ado, let's see what may have happened if Raditz was sent to Namek. Story starts now. Raditz had been battling Turnip for the better part of an hour, though this was quickly getting dangerous. While the two were close in power, the moon would soon rise, and while Raditz had some control in his Ozaru form, he had no idea what Turnip's skill was. It was possible she'd be able to control herself perfectly and thus outsmart Raditz, or perhaps she'd be wild and rage out, possibly hurting Kakarot's family. A very faint visage of the moon was beginning to form, but it wasn't bright enough to cause any effects on the Saiyans just yet. Luckily, Kakarot was having better luck, the Earthling being able to outmaneuver and eke out a win against Piccolo. Raditz, on the other hand, was having a hard time keeping Turnip down. While they were pretty even due to his exhaustion, Raditz should have the upper hand, but this woman, she was fierce. And as the fight carried on, this fierce determination only grew to the point where the female Saiyan was barely able to stand, but still charged our long-haired protagonist. The fight only ended once the two, both on shaky legs, shot blasts at each other. Turnip formed a sort of key crossbow on her arm, shooting a thin, highly concentrated arrow of key, while Raditz charged up a shining Friday. He didn't want to off Turnip. In truth, he thought killing was wrong. If he were to fall here, then not only Kakarot, but Gohan could be hit by the beam. He wondered why Turnip was unable to change, why she dared attack a mere child and his brother, but then Raditz remembered how his father was, how he was before Namek, full of pride and spite. The Saiyan grimaced before thinking of his brother and nephew, then pouring what little strength he had left into the beam, overpowering Turnip and sending her flying off into the distance. Raditz would have fallen on the ground if it weren't for Goku. Piccolo had managed to escape, but the younger Saiyan thought it was fine since nobody else was hurt. Raditz was about to call his brother stupid for thinking that way, but that was when he finally sensed a malevolent key, one that felt oddly familiar. Then he felt the energies of Tien, Krillin, Chaozu, and even Yamcha, but in an instant, both Krillin and Chaozu's were snuffed out. Fearing the worst, Raditz ordered Goku to check it out, saying he'd join the fight as soon as possible. For now, all the pineapple-haired Saiyan could do was sit there and sense what was going on from afar. Once Goku got to the battlefield, he saw what looked like a giant monkey in a set of Saiyan armor, though the sight of Yamcha nearly getting crushed got him back on track. Now, while Goku is pretty tired, Nappa wasn't in tip-top shape either, so Goku is able to maneuver around and somewhat damage the monkey, though it's nothing serious. However, once he spots Tien, who's pretty badly damaged, and the fallen Krillin, Goku begins to turn up the heat, blasting a Kamehameha right into the brute's eyes. He then tries to fly behind and aim a heavy punch towards Nappa's spine, but the brute seems to be very protective of his backside, quickly jumping away and wrapping up his tail. Goku finds this odd, but doesn't quite remember if Saiyans had any weaknesses regarding their backsides. The two continue to fight, both landing some pretty heavy blows on each other, but ultimately Nappa is able to grab Goku and crushes the younger Saiyan in his hands. During this, Tien and Yamcha launch a key Kofang fist towards Nappa, damaging not only his back, but part of his tail. This is enough to cause the brute to let go of Goku and check his tail, before launching a blast towards the two humans. But it's too late. Both Goku and the humans now realize his tail is a weak point, and of course, Goku forgot that Raditz warned him about Saiyan tails a few months ago. While Goku's body is pretty damaged, he can still create a Kienzon, and with some help from a very scared Yajirobe, the two send the disc flying right at Nappa's tail. This happens right as the Saiyan was about to crush Yamcha, and once he's in base, Tien swoops in and quickly finishes him off. Once all is said and done, 
Tien does his best to aid everyone while Yajirobe gets some senzu. When everyone's healed up, Tien tells them about Vegeta and the Cybermen before asking what he should do with the Saiyan. Goku, of course, wants to fight the man, but everyone else agrees he should be kept somewhere safe, perhaps even with Kami. However, that idea is shot down once Raz appears, holding an unconscious turnip. If Vegeta is sealed away forever, Frieza would get suspicious. Someone with that power suddenly disappearing would catch anyone by surprise. Not to mention, we have no idea why he'd come to Earth. Especially since I'm the only one who's supposed to know about Kakarot. The others are a bit hesitant to let Vegeta out, but Raz reveals a little Saiyan trick. The fact that both he and Goku are stronger from their respective fights. This, while seeming unfair to the humans, does mean that Vegeta wouldn't be a problem at all. Tien decides to unleash the prince, who immediately tries to transform once more, but Raditz quickly yanks his tail off. Vegeta then tries to fight Raditz, but he dodges every single attack and gets a good look at the person he used to know. Back when Vegeta was a child, he was a bit rude, sure, but he wasn't quite this volatile. Two decades later, he was spewing insults and fighting like a wild animal. So this was the cost of pride, huh? This was what led to their near extinction. The Raj grabbed Vegeta's hands and headbutt him, sending the prince reeling back. Stop this at once, Vegeta! You're no match for us, but you can at least hear us out! We don't want to hurt you anymore. We just need information. <laughs> As if I'd have anything to say to you, you low-class trash. I'd rather die than submit to a traitor like you. Have it your way, then. Raditz blitzed the prince, instantly knocking him out, before picking him up and flying off. He left Turnip to Tien, making sure everyone knew not to give her a sensu so she didn't get stronger. The next 24 hours were filled with Vegeta waking up and subsequently being knocked out by Raditz until he finally decided to hear him out. Once Vegeta revealed Frieza had overheard some information about Namekians and Dragon Balls, things got very serious. Raditz asked why Vegeta came here and not Frieza, and the prince revealed that Planet Namek was closer to the Emperor's location at the time. This causes Raditz to flip out. If Frieza had heard about that nearly a year ago, there's no telling what could have happened to Namek in that time. Vegeta saw the look on his former lackey's face and decided to chime in some more. See, I was coming here to get immortality for myself. That way I could defeat Frieza and avenge the Saiyan race. It was, a, it was the only option we had, Raditz, especially since by now that tyrant must have succeeded in getting his wish. This doesn't sway the Saiyan though, it only serving to anger him further. If Vegeta didn't have intel on everyone else in the force, Raditz would finish him then and there. But as for now, they needed the prince, but they didn't need him awake. The Saiyan quickly knocked Vegeta out once more before flying off to see an old friend. Raditz arrives at Capsule Corp to see Dr. Braves working on a ship, but Bulma is nowhere to be seen. When Raditz inquires as to where she is, the doctor says she's busy studying the Cybermen Tien had defeated. The Saiyan thinks she's a fool for trying to do so, but when he walks into the sub lab, he finds her actually interacting with the creatures, while Yamcha stands by for protection, of course. What in Guru's name is going on here? Shouldn't these things be ravenously attacking you? Wait, weren't there supposed to be six of these things? Raditz's yelling seems to provoke the Cybermen, but before they attack, Bulma calms them down and pushes the Saiyan outside. She explains that she managed to synthesize a plant pheromone close to theirs, so they basically consider her a Cyberman as well. But that's besides the point. Raditz asks to have his ship back, but there was just one problem with that. Bulma kinda dismantled it for study, which causes the pineapple to begin spazzing out. But, he is in luck, as Bulma's working on a ship that can get Raz to Namek in around a week. This does somewhat ease the Raz's worries, though he still feels anxious about Namek. However, 
what better way is there to ease your worries than by doing some training? With Boma and Dr. Breeze both working on the ship, it should only take a week to finish, so Raditz and Goku train as hard as they can, including Tien and Yamcha as well, since while they're gone, somebody will need to protect the Earth. Once the week is up, the two brothers prepare to leave when two others confront them, this being Vegeta and Turnip. Raditz is about to outright say no, but Goku points out that they'd make some great training partners. The Radish doesn't doubt that, but if these two learned their movesets and decided to backstab them, they'd lose for sure. But for as cautious as Raditz is, he also realizes that leaving Vegeta and Turnip alone together would spell disaster for the Earth. After a lengthy amount of silence and thinking, Raditz finally allows it, and they all board the ship, finding Bulma in the pilot seat. At this point, Raditz kind of just gives up and allows whoever to board the ship, but Vegeta does sort of scoff at this seemingly weak Earth woman coming along, something that causes a spat between the two. Regardless, the group blasts off for Namek, with Bulma revealing the ship doubles as a gravity chamber. When asked about the idea for this, Bulma says the idea just popped into her head, though it didn't sound like her. It sounded more like what she'd imagine a giant blue cricket sounded like. Anyways, the group takes full advantage of this gravity training, while Bulma reads some books in the captain's quarters. During said training, Goku ends up giving both Vegeta and Turnip Senzu, much to Raditz's chagrin. But it does prove to be useful, since now everyone is on much more even ground. By the end of the two weeks, the crew is much stronger than in canon. Raditz is around 150k, Turnip is at 135, and both Goku and Vegeta are at 120. This, of course, makes the prince pretty peeved off, but he chooses to stay silent until he figures out how things went on Namek. Once they land on said planet, things quickly go from bad to worse though. Large portions of the planet have been scorched, likely from key blasts and the nearby villages had been completely wiped off the map. When trying to use a locator, nothing popped up, meaning Guru was gone, though Raditz didn't know if anyone else was left. There was only a small amount of life he could sense on the entire planet, and when checking it out, he only found Frieza's mothership, along with five pods nearby. Vegeta revealed this was likely the Ginyus, though they weren't much to worry about. However, that wasn't the focus of our pineapple-haired Saiyan. What he was focused on was a small, barely traceable key signature. It felt like an old friend, though far less than what he had prior. It was the only key that felt familiar though, and it may be the last survivor of whatever happened here. With him already being on edge, and now with the added time crunch, Rats immediately flies in breaking through several walls of the ship before tearing into a small prison cell holding Nail, or what he thought was Nail. All the wounds kind of made it hard to tell. You, what are you doing here? Be quiet, save your strength until we're out of here. Raditz ripped apart his shackles before throwing Nail over his shoulder and flying off. However, two guards managed to spot him and sounded the alarm, something that quickly set the other three into action. Goku was going to cover his retreat, while Vegeta flew off on his own. As for Turnip, well, she figured a little offense was long overdue. Remembering what Raditz did to her, the female Saiyan charges up several Huntress arrows, launching them towards a ship and causing some massive damage. This did sort of peeve Goku and Raditz, but if it gave them enough time to escape, they'd stay silent for now. The group eventually made their way to a cave where they made Nail as comfortable as possible while Turnip stood guard. While she didn't exactly care whether this slug man lived, she was curious as to who beat such a strong warrior. Once Raditz asked the million dollar question, Nail answered honestly. When those monsters first landed, Sumuri and Maima were more than enough for them, but when those Ginyu guys landed, we stood little chance, and Guru, he, he... 
Nell reached up and put a hand on Raditz's head, sending a current of memories into the sand. In a second, Raditz was flooded with the fall of Namek, feeling the life being snuffed from each village just as Guru had. Eventually, the Ginyus made their way to Guru's tower, and knowing time was up, left everything to his last remaining son. Nail was captured and allowed to live so he could grant Frieza's wish, but once they were turned to stone, the Emperor took out all his anger on the last Namekian. This was enough to greatly anger the Saiyan, sending his key skyrocketing, something which immediately alerted the Frieza force, but he didn't care. Once Nell had finished transferring his memories, he fell limp, finally able to rest. And while Raditz had never felt close to him, this still managed to send him over the edge. The whole cave began to shake, and it would have collapsed if not for the immense pressure coming off of Raditz. Both Goku and Turnip were watching, and they could have sworn the Saiyan's hair was spiking up and turning gold, if only for a split second. But the arrival of the Ginyus and Frieza interrupted this event. My, my, you must be the monkey that old Namek was talking about. Although, with such a low battle power, I feel waiting here has been a waste. Ginyu, take care of these foolish Saiyans, will you? Raditz knew his power wasn't quite at Frieza's level, but seeing the man responsible for what happened to Guru and the others, it made him happy in a way. Now, even if he couldn't beat Frieza, at least he could land a punch on his ugly mug, for Mima, Nail, and everyone else this tyrant ended. The Saiyan raced forward, catching the Emperor off guard. He poured every ounce of ki into his fist, landing a heavy blow to Frieza's face, even causing him to fly out of the cave. Feel that, Frieza? That was for every single Namekian life you ended. No. Not just the Namekians, for my father, the Saiyans, and everyone else you mercilessly killed. Raditz was feeling good, as if he could actually do this, but when Frieza emerged from the rubble, mostly unscathed aside from a bruise on his cheek, things fell back into perspective. <laughs> you sure pack a punch, monkey, I'll give you that. Now, let's see if you can take what you dish out. With Frieza about to retaliate, and the Ginyus beginning their assault on Goku and Turnip, that's where we'll be leaving things off for right now. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you Huntress arrowed that like button, or maybe even try to avenge the subscribe button with a punch. Anyways, sorry for not uploading as much as I used to. Life has been kind of killing me recently, especially last week. Plus, I've been watching a lot of Hunter x Hunter, so yeah. But I am able to properly write scripts now and such, so we should be able to get one video per week, uh, hopefully more if time permits. And as always, thank you guys for continuing to watch, like, and especially subscribe. As you guys know, we're super close to 500, and I'm so excited to see which of the several what ifs I have planned wins the poll. I'm hoping we can get there in a couple weeks, but if not, that's cool. Perhaps I can finish up a couple what ifs and and or do a few mini what ifs. Well, I should stop rambling and finish this video, but as always, thank you guys. Even if you only watched until this point. You guys have a good day or night wherever you are. That's it for now. Bye bye.